Good morning everyone. Welcome to our Advent reading here on Wednesday the 15th of December. We're going to change gospel this morning just as we continue the story of the birth of Jesus. And we're going to go into Matthew's gospel this morning. And we're going to read Matthew 2 verses 1 to 6. Let's read these verses together. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About the same time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Amen. It's interesting when you think about the story of the wise men travelling. The first misconception that we have is that there were three wise men. We don't know, it doesn't tell us. We know they brought three gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh, but we don't know how many of them there were. It also says that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Judea. And at that, same, and at that, about that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem. So they had obviously been traveling for some time before Jesus was born, whenever the star that they were following had appeared, so that they arrive at the same time as Jesus' birth. That's taken them a long time. That's taken a lot of commitment from them to be able to do this. It just shows you how important they felt that this event was. Something that they had studied. Um, but it's really interesting because they, they follow the star and they come to where they naturally think a king would be in a palace. When in fact Jesus is somewhere completely different. Because his kingship is going to be completely different. But yet it's the Bible and the Old Testament writings that the priests and the teachers of religious law turn to to find out where Jesus is. And they automatically point to that passage in Bethlehem in Judea. Because um, it says, O Bethlehem, the land of Judah, you are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. They recognise that from this writing, their, their Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. But yet, when it comes to Jesus, they don't recognise him. He's not the sort of king that they want as religious leaders. They want a king who will throw out Herod, a king who will throw out the Roman Empire, who will make God's nation a nation on earth and make Israel a great nation to lead them all. They misunderstand the scripture. Time and time again, we can misunderstand scripture. Time and time again, we, we, we get it in our head that we, we think we know what it's all about. But it's only through reading and studying that we actually start to realise the true meanings of what God has given to us. They kind of got the true meaning in this bit. They saw that Bethlehem was to be the birthplace, but they misunderstood what it meant to be a leader, a shepherd for my people. Because a shepherd is not a, a violent person. A shepherd is a gentle person. Someone who knows their people. Someone who will defend them. Who will look after them. Who will protect them. Someone who will lay down their life. Defending their sheep. You think of a lion or a bear attacks. How a true shepherd will stand in the place. And fight that off. Their kings didn't do that for them. Their kings sent them out instead to fight. Their king didn't put himself in the in the way of danger. Their shepherd will. Their Messiah will. Jesus will put himself on the cross to take away their sins. Jesus will put himself in a place of shame so that his people can be saved. So that you and I can have salvation. Again, this is another marvellous part of the story. Seeing these visitors from the east, seeing the star and the prophecy of it, seeing how the, the, the leading priests kind of get it, but then they miss it. So many missed opportunities for them. For us, don't let Christmas be a missed opportunity. 
don't let us be an, a time whenever we only think of presents. We only think of turkey. We only think of family getting together. Help us all to remember this Christmas time, the true meaning of Christmas, the coming of that shepherd, the coming of a saviour. Let's pray. Father, again today, thank you for these wonderful promises from your words. Again, how we see another part of prophecy coming true. How we see your people being brought closer to you. Lord, help us not to misunderstand your word. Help us not to be so close-minded and narrow-minded that we don't listen to what you're telling us and how you show us from others. Help us to be open to your Holy Spirit teaching us and leading us and guiding us and revealing the, the truths of your word to us so that we can grow closer to you each day. And Lord, may we truly know the real meaning of Christmas in the run-up to this Christmas this year. Be with us, Father, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining with us this morning. We'll be back tomorrow morning with another reading as we continue our Advent readings towards Christmas. In the meantime, take care and God bless.